Hi and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Now, a fellow YouTuber saw and recently played a tune on his channel which celebrated the ancient tradition of the soul cake. Now before I show you this recipe, I wonder if you'd humour me with the story of the history of the soul cake and the part it played in Halloween. The old English custom of soul caking or souling originated when the singers went about on All Saints Day or All Souls Day, which is November the 1st and 2nd, to beg for cakes in remembrance of the dead. The soulers, as the singers were called, droned out their ditties repeatedly and tonelessly without pause or variation. It's doubtless that Shakespeare was familiar with the whining songs because Speed in The Two Gentlemen of Verona observed tartly that one of the special marks of a man in love was to speak pulling like a beggar on Hallow's Mass. All Hallow's Eve, or Eve, a night of pranks and fun in the counties of Old England, was celebrated with many wholesome games. Young people, for example, read future events from the way roasting chestnuts spattered and jumped in the red hot coals. They bobbed for apples and flung the snake-like pairings behind themselves to learn the initials of their future partners. Our British ancestors brought these old folk practices to the New World, where generations of adolescents have observed them on a night where traditionally witches ride their broomsticks and hobgoblins venture abroad. From Hallow Eve, a night to remember our ancestors, comes the modern tradition of Halloween, but let's take time now to bake a soul cake in their memory. So to start with, I have a bowl of two and a half cups of finely sifted all-purpose flour. And into that bowl, I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of softened butter. So using the tips of my finger, I'm just going to rub the butter and flour together until I have a nice smooth breadcrumb. Now when you're comfortable, your butter and your flour have come to this beautiful breadcrumb consistency. We're going to add three quarters of a cup of caster sugar. Now I don't know if you have caster sugar where you are, but that's a finer sugar than normal, not as fine as powdered sugar. Then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of mixed spices, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, grated nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of finely grated cinnamon. And we're just going to use a spoon and start to mix this through. I just want to fully incorporate all the sugar and spices in. So at this point we've got a lovely breadcrumb with a sweet smell of cinnamon and spices coming off it. I'm going to add now uh, a beaten egg into the mixture. Then I'm going to continue to mix that through. Now it's possible depending on the size of your egg you may need to add a little bit of warm milk into the mixture to start to bind the flour. Once the egg has started to incorporate, it's time to start to use your hands to mix the dough together. Now at this point, the recipe also calls for two teaspoons of vinegar, which will also help to bind the dough together. The vinegar is just a, a plain white wine vinegar. Now my soul cake dough doesn't need any extra moisture in there. I'm quite happy with the consistency. It is a little crumbly. It's quite a light pastry. Now I'm just going to cover that with a damp cloth and leave it in a cool area and let it settle for about half an hour before I prepare the cakes. Now when the dough has been allowed to rest, we're just going to take it out onto a lightly floured surface. Now guys, don't be deceived by the plainness of this cookie. It's absolutely delicious. You're going to get all the lovely flavours of this, the cinnamon, but you're also going to get this beautiful short crust buttery biscuit really, it's a cookie. So we're now going to roll out our pastry dough. Now while we're rolling the pastry out, we want to be preheating our oven to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 350 Fahrenheit. Now roll the dough out, but not too thin. We're going to be rolling it um, to probably about a quarter of an inch, half an inch. If it cracks as you're rolling it, just push it together and smooth it over. Now the sole cakes are quite thick, so I'm not going to roll the dough out too thin. And by tradition they're cut to a circle, but I haven't got a cookie cutter quite the size I want. So I'm going to use this cup size ramekin to cut 
the shape out. I'll just lay it down on my dough and I'm going to take a knife and just cut round the edge of my sole cake. And it's a tradition for the sole cake to have a cross on the top. Now, just take a, a wooden spoon and push down an indentation. It is, after all, a religious cake. And that then can be just lifted gently and popped onto a baking tray. Now there are the sole cakes ready to go into the oven. Now I've decorated a couple of the crosses with sultanas and that's also a tradition with these cakes. Now they are a generous size cookie or cake, but then it's a season of generosity and they're cut into little fours, so they're great for sharing. Now into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes and keep an eye on them. We don't want them to go too brown, we want a lovely rich golden brown. And there you have it, there's a plate of delicious traditional soul cakes. I hope you've enjoyed this one guys, I hope you've enjoyed a little bit about the history. So this soul cake goes out to you Dave, thanks very much for the idea. And don't forget guys, when Halloween comes around next year, make yourself soul cakes. They're delicious, smell great, taste just as good. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments down below. I'll put my subscribe button here. Love it if you'd subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Be good, I'll see you in the next video. A soul for a soul in cake. I pray you, Mrs. for a soul in cake. Apple, pear, plum or cherry. Anything to make us merry.